is going to be the MBA SoRare uh, partnership. So SoRare is a fantasy sports NFT company. Uh, they were big with like soccer. So like a couple years ago, probably like, I think they had McKinney on Salka in like the first release of the cards, which I, th I think the first release of the soccer cards was back in, it must, I guess it must've been 20, 2019 or 2020. Um, because that's kind of when NFTs sort of started picking up a little bit and within sports NFTs, I think one thing that is going to help the industry uh, of sports NFTs is going to be trying to figure out a way to combine the NFT with some sort of utility. So in this case, it's a fantasy game along with a collectability type of thing. So like there are different rarities and, you know, you have, I, I forget the exact numbers, but I know that each of the, uh, they have like, uh, I think it's like bronze, silver, red, and blue, I think are the four rarities and they each get more rare kind of as you're going. Um, so I think this is, you know, with the NBA kind of coming into this, I think it's big because you saw like with top shot, um, I don't necessarily think that top shot was done correctly. Like, I think they were, they were riding on the hype of sports cards and how popular like that rookie class was with, um, uh, with Lamelo, And then even the year before with Zion, I think they were riding on that kind of wave. I also think the one thing that I, I, I don't know why more people didn't talk about this when, when top shot first came out, you couldn't take your money out of the platform. So it's like, yeah, all of these random moments are going to be trading for ridiculous amounts when you can't get your money out of it. But that, that once people were able to get their money out, I think that's kind of when you saw like a huge step back for, for top shot. I, I even, but to be honest, I even think top shot is still kind of, it's still pretty popular. Like if you look at, um, I, I forget, I think, uh, coin tracker, I think is what it's called. It's a website where you can track NFT projects. It's usually in the top projects. And I think it's going to be a revolutionary type of thing because they also launched the all day, which is the NFL. And what I've seen from them so far is that they're doing, they're releasing the NFTs the way that I thought the NBA should have done it was they're releasing like historic ones. So like the Odell Beckham catch, for example, was one of the NFTs that you could, you could have, uh, you could have purchased for the, for the NFL all day. And, but like I said, now getting back into so rare, so rare also has an MLB partnership. So you can do this sort of fantasy uh, NFT type of thing with, with baseball, which I, I looked into it a little bit. I couldn't, I haven't really played around in the platform that much, but I know that so rare has, they're a company that's raised a bunch of funding um, I think Gary V, I'm pretty sure he's one of the investors. Uh, but, you know, overall, I think the the platform has shown they sort they're, they're I think what this is my take on NFTs in general. You're it's going to be like the Internet, uh, the Internet boom of the early 90s when like you're going to have the Amazon, Google's, uh, Twitter's, like all of these companies, they're going to come out of this. Uh, but then you're also going to have like the pets.coms and like, uh, I don't know, any random company that was on paper worth probably billions, but then they weren't doing anything. So then they kind of crashed. I think so rare is a company that could for, from a sports NFT perspective, I think that they're probably going to be a company that ends up coming out of this. I, I don't know what you could even call it. Like out of, out of this era, uh, and will be successful down the road. I think it was smart of them to launch soccer first because it, um, it, it, I think the soccer, the amount of people who are into soccer is much higher than the amount of people who are into American sports, for example, like soccer is the biggest sport in the world. And I just, you know, I just talked about that. Uh, but I think it was smart of them to launch soccer first. And now then they launched MLB this season in the middle of the season if I were them, I probably would have waited until either the off season or the beginning of next season to launch because they sort of launched in the middle of the season. Uh, like with, with the NBA, they just announced this partnership. So I would imagine they're going to have something up before the start of the season for the NBA. And I don't know if they're going to do it like, I guess, the, well, because it's their cards. They're not, they're not the highlights like Top Shot and All Day. Uh, so they're not going to be, maybe they'll have historic ones, but I guess maybe not. We'll see. I mean, we'll see kind of how it goes. Cause 
these NFTs, you can also, you can buy and sell them the same way that you buy and sell top shots and stuff like that. So I think, you know, I like so rare and what they've do. I like the look of the cards. I'm, I'm excited to see sort of what the partnership sort of entails, like how they're going to launch these cards. If they're going to launch them, um, if they're going to, you know, I don't know, maybe so rare. I, I don't know if there's a licensing thing here. I would guess there might be just for the fact that like, uh, there, there are tons of different digital licenses. I would imagine the video license for the NBA probably won't be something that they'll be launching with, but if they do, I think that it'll be, um, actually probably not. Cause it's, it's more of a fantasy game, but, but either way, I, I like I said, I still think, uh, adding the NBA to so rare's arsenal is going to be important. And I don't know, I, I, you know, for fanatics in general, like I know that they keep, you know, buying companies and they keep buying licenses, but if they keep doing well, it could be something where, cause tops did NFTs as well. So it could be something where fanatics buy so rare and then they're the ones that are running the NFT business for tops slash fanatics because tops did release NFTs, uh, but they've released them on like four different platforms. And it really kind of, I think that they, they tried to jump into it. And it's the same thing sort of with other NFT companies like they didn't really know what they were doing. They knew how to maybe mint the NFTs and get them out, but they didn't know they didn't know the technology and sort of how to how to do it correctly, I guess if that makes sense because if you if you want an, a baseball NFT, it's like they're on a bunch of different platforms. So like if so rare comes in and and I think that's ultimately what maybe they're trying to do. Like yes, they're building a product that uh they're building a product that you can buy and sell, but if they want to sell to a company like Tops, I think that they're building a platform that that's definitely a possibility if that's what they want to do. I mean, it could even be that they just want to run this platform. Uh, they want to, you know, keep adding licenses. Like, I don't know, maybe down the road we see an NFL one uh, or NHL. I don't, I don't know for sure, but they got basically the three, I would consider them the three biggest licenses in the, uh, in the uh, hobby sports card space. Like if they can get the NFL, that would be great. But I think that uh, across the board, you see much more diversity when it comes to kind of who people are buying within baseball and basketball, football, there isn't really as much. So um, I think it might be tough, but you know, it could be a thing where it's like, even, you know, maybe it's like ESPN buys them and then they integrate ESPN into fantasy. And I, I think that's one of the things in my opinion, that really, I think that's one thing that can set apart uh, a company that's sort of growing is figuring out how to combine a bunch of different industries. Uh, you know, that's one thing that I was thinking about with like the NFL, like with the uh, positional players of the NFL, if, if a company can figure, if a sports card company can figure out how to implement fantasy into their, into their repertoire, I think it would be interesting for them to, I think, I think it would, if they can figure out how to introduce fantasy, I mean, I think that might help the value of some of these, some of the NF, the, the, the position players, but I don't know, maybe not. I mean, I don't know, like, like I've talked about this in the past, like, I don't know where, I don't know what has to happen for position players to become more popular. Um, I thought maybe star stock would be one way that that would help. Uh, I guess maybe not. I, I think maybe check out my cards might be one way. Uh, but the, the digital trading, uh, I think is just, it, it's, it's something that a lot of collectors don't really like, but it's something that I think a lot of people who maybe aren't into sports cards do like, if that makes sense. Like MLB, the show, for example, and I'll kind of give you a little bit about my, a little bit about my background. So MLB, the show is how I got into sports cards because I was trading the cards and on the coins and building up my coins for my team. Uh, but it was all seamless. It was all digital. There was no, um, you know, you understood the fees. You understood there was no shipping or anything. You could just, you could buy something and then immediately list it. And I think that's what we're going to see with NFTs and sports. They need, they need to figure out a way to build that platform, which, you know, that's another, maybe, maybe it's a show, maybe MLB, the show, it starts great NFTs into their game i don't i don't know for sure exactly how they would do it or what they would want to do but it's like the generation of uh people who like sports that are 
basically trading NFTs already. Like they, and they've been trading NFTs before NFTs were a thing. Like they were on Madden, they were on FIFA, they were on MLB The Show, trading these cards for coins or buying packs. Uh, so, you know, and it's really, it's wild that people still sort of look at NFTs as not important because like I just said, people have been, tr- people, people have been trading, the people have been doing uh, how am I trying to word it? People have been trading NFTs before they were NFTs, if that makes sense. Like every, anything, any skin you buy in a game, that's just an NFT that you can't trade. But if you were able to trade that, that would be something that would be interesting. Uh, or, you know, if you're Fortnite or Call of Duty or Apex Legends, whatever. But like Madden FIFA, you're trading cards for coins. And it's like, it, like I said, in my head, when I was doing that, I was just like, there's got to be a way to do this in real life which, you know, check out my cards is an example of a, is a, a, an example of a product in a company that I think should be much larger, uh, just based on the fact that they have everything, they have such a large platform and everything is digital and, you know, all the fees are kind of all worked into there and you, they're pretty clear about all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I just think it's check out my cards is a platform that should be maybe a little bit bigger. Um, overall, just based on the fact that they are, I mean, if you really want to, if you really want to get crazy, check out my cards. If they didn't allow you, which obviously they you want, they want you to take your cards sometimes. But like, they're just it's just in that it's just check out my cards is NFTs. Like that's one way to think about it. They're just NFTs that you can, you know, get shipped to you physical a physical uh, product that you can trade digitally. That's kind of I think the I don't know if anyone's coined that phrase, but that's something that. Uh, I've been thinking about like figuring out a way to trade physical assets digitally. Um, whoever can do that, which check on my cards has kind of done. Whoever can figure out how to do that the best is going to have huge upside when it comes to what their company could do in the future. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think NFT sports NFTs for sure. Like it, it, fantasy, fantasy, you could say that you know, fantasy players are NFTs. Like they're, you're, you're picking them up off the waiver wire. You're, you're, you know, trading with your friends. Those are just NFTs. Like it's, I guess it's, you know, you're, you're kind of taking the layers back there and it's maybe a little bit of an exaggeration to call everything an NFT, but it's like, if you really look at it, I think a lot more things are like NFTs than aren't like NFTs. (laughs) I guess if that, if that point kind of makes sense.